What's up friends? Welcome back to another video or welcome if you're new here. My name is Alex, my pronouns are he, him, and this is my channel Pucks on Paperbacks where I recommend queer books and I like to create my own bookish challenges. Today I am recommending you my favorite underrated queer books. This is queer books I don't see enough on booktube but Realistically, it's just underrated books that I don't recommend a lot. This is inspired by the trends I've seen on TikTok and Instagram where people do books I don't see enough on TikTok or books I don't see enough on Bookstagram. If you enjoy this, I'm doing the 12 days of Vlogmas so feel free to hit subscribe and turn on my post notifications so you don't miss a video and give this video a like if you enjoy it. Let's get started. First off is the book that actually inspired this video because I haven't talked about it in such a long time. This is You Asked for Perfect by Laura Silverman. She's one of my favorite authors. This is about a Jewish boy, Ariel. He's in his senior year and he is just swarmed with academics. He is struggling with just keeping everything together. There's just a lot of things thrown at him and I feel like anyone who is in school right now and on winter break will be able to relate to this character because he is just really dealing with a lot of schoolwork that he cannot manage but when he fails a calculus quiz he decides to get a tutor who is a boy named Amir at his school and there's some romantic tension there. I feel like this book is just so underrated which is why I'm including it first because I love it so much. Let me know in the comments if you've read it because I feel like I'm the only one who has read it. <laughs> Laura Silverman is also Jewish so we get to see a lot of her Jewish heritage in this book which I really enjoyed and overall I just love this and I think it is severely underrated. Next is a novella that I read this year and I really enjoy. This is Their Troublesome Crush by Zan West. This is a novella of trans characters in their 30s and 40s. There is demisexual rep. We have a fat trans character who talks about how he can't get top surgery because of his weight and I really enjoyed that conversation. We have autistic rep which is own voices. The majority of the representation in here is own voices. There is so much good in this. I'll link my review down below but I love this novella so much and I just want more people to read it because it's so awesome. I loved it so much. There is a lot of musical and show tunes references. We have Jewish representation, diabetes rep. This novella was so refreshing to read. I loved the conversations. I will give a warning that this does have BTSM so if that's something you're not interested in, totally cool. Don't have to read it but if you do want to read about fat trans characters who are in their 30s and 40s. I highly recommend this. It is just so good and I want more people to read it. Next is a comic series that I really enjoy. This is the Backstagers and what I specifically like about it is there is a trans boy who transfers to an all-boys school and this is a fantastical book about what happens backstage of a school theater and it is just so well done. I was so captivated by this comic series. It was so awesome and has a lot of queer characters and I just love seeing a trans boy at an all-boys school. It was so cool to see that representation and I highly recommend it. Next is Dear Rachel Maddow by Adrian Kistner. I listened to this on audio and I just love this book so much. If you like politically driven books, letter formats, female female romances, and dark contemporaries, I highly recommend this. It is about a girl named Bryn. She loves Rachel Maddow and that is something that is helping her through a lot of the toxicity that she's dealing with. She's in a toxic living arrangement and she is just trying to get through high school. She is given a school assignment to write an email to somebody that they admire and she ends up writing to Rachel Maddow and she replies. I love these kind of tropes and I just love this book. She has a job. I really enjoyed that because I feel like I don't see many YA contemporaries where the character just casually has a job if it's not for like the purpose of the story like oh they work at a bookstore and someone comes in you know that kind of stuff. I believe she works at Old Navy. I could be wrong about that but I think I'm like 90% sure and I will have the trigger warnings down below. I'll probably make like a blog post for this like I do for every video so feel free to look down below at my blog post and the trigger warnings will be there. 
I love this book. It's so good. I hope more people read it if they're not triggered by it because it is such a great book. Next is a nonfiction book that I've been talking about all year. I read this in my video where I read books that TikTok recommended me so you can go and watch that up here if you would like to. This is Invisible How Young Women with Serious Health Issues Navigate Work, Relationships, and the Pressure to Just Seem Fine by Michelle Lent Hirsch. I suggest they go over to my TikTok video Video because that is where I talk more about this book because it's like my real-time reactions and I just love this so much because it talks about all types of women. In short, this is about how women face ableism in the workforce and I love this so much and I'm recommending it here because you're probably like queer rep where but it does have interviews from trans women and queer women. I really love this because the author interviews so many people. She interviews queer women, she interviews trans women, and also BIPOC women, and I just love this so much. It doesn't need a very big pitch, but if you are interested in it more, I would suggest to go over to my TikTok video because I mention it more in that one, and I just love this. It's really good. Next is a book that I have not read since 2016, so please take this recommendation with a grain of salt. However, I read it long ago because Becky Abertali recommended it, and if she recommends it, it's a good book. So this is True Letters from a Fictional Life by Kenneth Logan, and I pitched this as To All the Boys I Loved Before But Gay. So this is about a boy who is gay and he's very much in the closet but he writes letters to his parents as if he was out and they end up getting sent out and we see the aftermath of that. I specifically love this book because To All the Boys I Loved Before, one of my favorite book series, but also because there's mentions of hockey in this and if you're new here, I love hockey. Even though I read it a couple years ago, I still recommend it because I really had a great time reading it. So even though I did read it in 2016, I still really enjoyed reading this and definitely want to give it a reread. Next is a middle grade and this is Me, My Dad, and the End of the Rainbow by Benjamin Dean. And I will say this is a British author. He is from the UK. So I want to mention that there might be a reason that this isn't being talked about a lot. I will leave a link down below to the book depository if you would like to pick this up because it's awesome. It teaches kids about pride. It is about a boy named Archie. His dad comes out as gay and he's trying to figure out what that means. There's a metaphor in this book that I really love when Archie approaches an older boy who has come out as gay and he talks to him about how his dad being gay is just a slice of the cake. So his dad is a cake and him being gay is just a slice of the cake. And I thought that was so awesome. I just really enjoy this book because it does teach kids about pride. Archie and his friends try and find his dad at Pride and they end up getting lost. There's a conversation of why Pride has happened because the kids just think it's a party, but they meet other adults who tell them why Pride is so important. And I think that this was just such a great way to introduce kids to why we have Pride. And it's awesome. I highly recommend it. Next is Caddy Wampus by Ash Van Otterloo. I love this middle grade so much. This follows two girls, Delpha and Katie Bird. Katie Bird is intersex and I really like having that rep. We have rival witch families, powers, and I really loved this book so much. If you are looking for queer joy, I highly recommend this book. Next is Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. This is about a girl named Simone. She's directing her school's production of Rent. She is bisexual. Her friend Lydia is also bisexual and her friend Claudia is an ace lesbian. So nice to see that rep in this book. We also have theater elements and I just really enjoyed this book. It was such a fun read and a quick read as well, but very impactful. Character Simone was born HIV positive. So since we are talking about rent, there is a lot of conversations about being HIV positive and HIV in general. We have such a good cast of characters in this book and I loved it so much and I highly recommend it. And last is a novella that I literally don't think I've talked about ever on this channel and this is Long Macchiatos and Monsters by Allison Evans. We have disability rep and trans rep. This is a trans for trans romance about two people who meet in a coffee shop over their 
love for shitty sci-fi movies. There's Disability Rep, the non-binary character has a disfigured hand and the trans man has a prosthetic leg. It is also set in Australia which is pretty cool and since I haven't talked about this novella ever on my channel it felt fitting to include it here. So that was my underrated queer books recommendation video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have read any of these books or novellas and what you thought of them. I would love to talk to you in the comments. If you're not up to leaving a lengthy comment because there are so many Vlogmas videos that you need to catch up on, just comment down below a hockey emoji and I will know that you stayed. Thank you for watching, thank you for supporting, and I will see you tomorrow with another video. Bye!